Hey Coder, so before we continue the series on building a full stack SaaS application using QuickJS, I first want to take a look at the solution architecture that we're going in with. So the first thing is we're going to have our front end, which is going to be our QuickJS application. And that's going to have your home page, your login page, your sign up page, logout route. It's going to have members only or protected routes in it as well so that if a member signs up for something, whether they're free or paid, you can control who can access what. And we're also going to have the root, right? The root is built into QuickJS. And this is the same if you're using Next.js, you would have underscore app, right? It's the same kind of idea. And this is going to be responsible for basically listening to events that happen with user authentication. But before we actually get into how that's going to work, we need users. We need people to be able to sign up. So we're going to actually start in the next video with creating our Superbase infrastructure. And I'm going to walk you through that step by step on how to build a Superbase database that's gonna handle your user authentication. Because in my experience in a production environment, Superbase has been flawless. It is amazing. And it's very, very easy for a developer to go and get stuff set up if you're used to using any other database technology, basically. So we're gonna go and get that set up and we're gonna create a profiles table. So Superbase comes as default with a users table, which is going to handle whether that user logs in through GitHub or Apple or Google or email. It's gonna handle passwords and all of that. And you won't be able to see things like passwords, which makes sense, right? That should be built into that service. So we'll have that users table, but we also need a profiles table. And the profiles, is basically going to handle our role based access control. So it's going to handle whether or not a user should have admin privileges or free privileges. And if they're not even signed up or logged in, it just won't return a user if a user tries to access a page they should be able to. So it's going to handle all of that. And basically what will happen is when you go and sign up on your sign up page from QuickJS or Next.js, or whatever you're using, I'm using QuickJS, but when you sign up there, essentially what it's going to do is trigger creating a user and that trigger is automatically going to create a row for that user with details like, did they agree to terms and conditions? What is their Stripe customer ID? Um, what role should they be? And this is a table you can manipulate with code, not this one, but this one. And therefore we need to set up a profiles table so that we can give that user certain privileges based on how they interact with the site. Now, Superbase has an amazing, amazing support offering for connecting with auth providers. So I like using Gmail and GitHub because probably 50% of your customer base are going to use Gmail and email as well. So in these tutorial videos, I'm gonna be using email, but I will also do a video to show you how you can get the sign up or sign in working using you know gmail or github or whatever you want to choose there's a huge list you can choose from i like using these two so essentially superbase is going to work along with these auth providers whether it's these providers or email to interact with your site right so if you sign up to superbase it's basically going to send a sign up confirmation to your email and then you go and approve that etc we'll get into the details so i won't go into that in too much detail now What's important is the root of our application because this is going to listen for changes in whether or not a user is signed in. And if they are signed in, then we wanted to go and say, create the server side HTTP only cookies so that if you go to your server or you make a request to a server, etc., it's going to be able to extract the cookies and that user can't essentially hack your website and make requests to routes on the back end they shouldn't be able to. The other thing it's going to do is also change the front end side. So we will write something in that says, okay, cool. If this user is authenticated, if they have a session going, then the nav bar should say, say dashboard or members area. It shouldn't say login or sign up. Now, in terms of the back end, this is going to handle 95% of our server side code. And I say 95%, I'll come back to what the other 5% is in a minute. So for example, if Superbase has a user created, we might want it to fire off a request to an API to create a Stripe customer ID. And I'm going to do these tutorials with Stripe, but I must tell you that I use PayPal in production as well. So if you want videos on how to integrate PayPal, just ask in the comments, I'll do some later on in the series. But for now, we're gonna use Stripe. We want a Stripe customer ID created. 
we don't want to not create that Stripe customer ID because your user, if they keep interacting with your site and buying different things, etc., and you're creating a Stripe customer ID every time they do that on purchase, you're going to end up with all these Stripe customers for the same person in your Stripe dashboard. And you don't want that. And I know that because I did that. I made that mistake <laughs> never again. So we're going to create Stripe and we're going to create a connection to Stripe. And then when Stripe has activity on it, it's going to send webhooks, right? It's going to send updates to your application and you can interact with those updates. So let's say a user cancels and you want to then change the date that their membership expires or you want to change something for that user. Your backend can handle that because Stripe will tell your backend something happened. And that's what the webhooks here are basically for. Finally, we also need to delete HTTP only cookies. And I'll talk more about cookies when we get into those sessions. But you want your site to be secure. So use HTTP only cookies. That means a user cannot manipulate cookies from the browser. And there will be some other requests you might have that a user makes as well. So let's say you have something calculating something for you on the back end. You want it all handled server side. You don't want it touching the browser, then this will handle all of that for you. Now, finally, down here, you'll see we have this Nginx and I'm going to quickly go over what Nginx here is, but we'll talk about it more when we get into that session. Before this puts you off, let me just tell you from firsthand experience, in my own experience, Nginx was an absolute game changer and I was sad that I never came across it earlier. I was sad, literally sad, because I'd spent months on authentication, having authentication problems. Maybe a browser does some kind of update and then your cause doesn't work for any user that uses that browser. So they don't repeat signups, like it literally impacts your bank account. And then I finally came across Nginx and this was a game changer because Nginx you can use as an API gateway and a reverse proxy. What that means is I can have different servers in completely different locations running, right? Different domains, different areas, doesn't matter where they are. If a user is making the requests through Nginx, which they won't know they're doing, but they will make the request through Nginx, Nginx will fire off that request to everywhere it needs to go. And it will all happen from the same domain. So essentially cause then becomes almost irrelevant. So this is very, very useful because you know that your customers aren't going to have issues or your visitors aren't going to have issues with being able to access something, especially if they paid for it. It's really frustrating for them. So you'll notice here I have all these different ports going on here. I have port 3000 and right now QuickJS works with port 5173, but we're going to change that. We're going to set it up to work with port 3000 because if I leave it as 5173, in my experience, it didn't work very well with Nginx. I don't know why, I'm not an expert, but this fixed it, so I'll show you how to do that. And then the server will put on, say, port 3005, doesn't really matter, pick a number, that's what I'm gonna use. Superbase doesn't matter, because that's all happening in the cloud, so we'll access that through its own URL. And Nginx doesn't care about Superbase, and it doesn't need to either, so that's absolutely fine. We will have Nginx, route to port 3000 and port 3005. The other thing you can do with Nginx is you can also protect your routes there too. So if someone tries to visit a route, it will go and check if that person's authenticated before it even fires off the request to the route. That's basically, just looking through this, that's basically the solution architecture we're going to go with. And in the next video, we're gonna start with Superbase. So I'm gonna do a video, how to set up Superbase so that it does everything that I've outlined here and I'll recap what it's gonna do and what each of these will do at the start of each of the videos in the series. So until the next one, if you're feeling stuck on something and you're not sure what to do and you're being unproductive because of it, just remember, shut up and code.